Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be taking a look at a past client's y-axis. And we're doing a forensic look at this because, again, he's using a lead screw. You can see his anti-backlash nut here. you got the springs for compression and tension on the lead screw. And I want you guys to hear what a non-linear lead screw sounds like. Now, again, this is not going to be prevalent, this sound, typically on a ball screw because a ball screw is totally different in format than a lead screw. But I want you to hear and see. You're going to notice something with this as it travels. And I want you guys to hear it because if you guys are new or you guys are analyzing your own system, this will give you a heads up as far as what to look for in terms of correcting the system issue if you have something like this. And even if you do have a sound like this on your system, it may still provide linear motion. It does not mean it's correct. So whenever you're assembling a new system, go over it and make sure that you don't have this prevalent. I'm going to hit play now. We'll go over it once it's done. Notice the travel on the screw, how it's got that slight wave to it and also the granulation sound. It's really prevalent when he's going to the left. You can see that slight bow in the screw as it goes up and down. Something else I want to point out, you notice that the lead screw is inserted directly into a bearing. There's not an actual bearing block. The lead screw simply just goes in the bearing. And again, these are totally different than ball screws. I get that question all the time. Does it mean a lead screw can't perform well? No, it does not. But what we've seen here and identified is we have a slight bow in this actual lead screw. Not only do we have a slight bow in it, we have a granulation sound that is not linear at all. That's definitely not the way it should sound. He's going to jog this machine back, let him play it. You'll hear that sound slightly diminish. And once again, you can see how that that nut is actually traveling. It's got a slight wave to it up and down and up and down as it travels all the way back. And this is why I'm telling you guys that when you get a new system, do not assemble your transmission immediately. This is the most critical component of the chassis in terms of smoothness and linearity. Check your lead screws, check your ball screws for symmetry. And the best way to do that is on a piece of granite or a piece of glass and I prefer granite because, again, your, your tolerance will be much tighter um, as far as seeing any waves. Let it roll on the granite without the ball nut naturally and see if there's any wave in that screw. If there is, then you want to contact the vendor immediately and look for a replacement. Now, again, we don't know how this unit was handled as far as these lead screws, but we definitely can see a slight bow here. The granulation sound is simply unacceptable. If you have that at all in your machine, then we know that needs to be corrected. Uh, this client actually contacted the vendor, got himself some new lead screws. But again, common questions, common things that happen all the time, especially with now new vendors popping up. We don't know where they're sourcing components. We don't know how they're packaging components. Um, the big thing here is that we pay close attention to how the machine sounds. If you're looking for an accurate robot and one that's going to last, you want to make sure your transmission of all components is set properly. And this, once again, we've defined as being incorrect. Um, again, it does take more work if you've already assembled the system and have to disassemble it. So I always recommend testing this uh, prior and seeing how your symmetry is, checking everything for linearity and smoothness. That is the big thing. Um, there's different ways to do this. If you wanted to do it, I've had guys use drills as far as actually attaching a drill to see and simulate where the motor's present just to see uh, motion. That does work. Just make sure, of course, you don't actually uh, engrave or chip the actual lead screw if you're far as uh, where your motor coupler is going to engage it. Um, that's something to always think about. Throw some tape over the actual uh, lead screw. 
but in uh, prevalence, this is something you will see on lead screws mostly and never on a ball screw. Ball screws are machined differently than a lead screw. Again, this is a substitution for a ball screw transmission. Do not confuse the two. Okay, not that a lead screw cannot be accurate and true. That's not the case. But a ball screw is machined under different tolerances, and this is a problem prevalent more on lead screws due to the fact that, again, we're dealing with different steels most of the time. And again, you can see here the anti-backlash nuts made out of brass under most components. And again, we have a spring-loaded tensioner. We don't know how these are set, and it's much more difficult to get perfect linearity because, again, an end user is simply you know, using hand tolerances to set this in terms of backlash on the actual pressure for the lead screw itself because that's what we're looking at here. These, these actual springs are putting pressure between the gaps of the actual thread and that's how we're hoping to take out backlash. Ball screws don't do that. Ball screws are one joint actual system where it actually goes on it's all in one symmetrical piece and it has an insert inside of it and that takes out the backlash that's why these are so different and that's why I get the question all the time why is this system so much cheaper or this is a lot of system for the money I see the linear linear bearings here and these are excellent by the way the linear bearings but again keep in mind there is no substitution for a ball screw it's not that the lead screw isn't accurate or can be accurate but the tolerance here we're talking about is totally different than a ball screw. So don't confuse the two. Just be aware of what's there. And again, be aware of the potential problems that exist. And seeing this in action and listening to it is a great way for you guys to experience and learn from someone else rather than having to, you know, assemble your system potentially and have to disassemble it. So again, I hope that this video has been helpful. I hope it's answered many of your questions. I know more videos always bring up more questions, you know, and I cannot emphasize enough, just because you have your system assembled and it seems to be running cleanly, check your systems. Always, periodically check them. You should be running your axis back and forth after probably 10 to 15 hours of use and double check and see if any granulation effect like you heard there is present. That could be a bearing issue. In this case, it's probably prevalent of a bearing and also we definitely saw waviness in the lead screw itself. But double check your system. The more you guys are acting so forth as a mechanic on your system, you'll inherently see any issues that arise. And I've seen many clients assemble systems because, again, they're not familiar with it yet, and they assemble it, get it all assembled, and then they're running it back and forth. Everything seems well, and then we listen to it after, and the trained ear hears that and says, wait a minute, this isn't correct. And that's where you run into problems. Or, God forbid, they run it indefinitely and, you know, the bearing totally locks up or something else catastrophic happens. So, again, pay attention to this. I hope that the video has been helpful. If you guys have any questions, require quotes, please message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my eBay store. You'll see my contact information beginning of the video and at the end. I look forward to you. Thank you all for your support. Take care.